Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look at the graphs of sine and cosine uh, in radians. This is a duplicate of something we maybe did in class, but in case you missed it, um, we're going to kind of go over the sheet again just like we did in class before. So let's first develop our parent functions. The parent function that we're going to develop first is y equals sine x. Uh, now where does sine x come from? Well, remember that on a unit circle, sine is the y coordinate. So as you go around the unit circle, close enough, with the angle 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2, and all the way back to 2 pi, if we list the y coordinate, we have y equals 0, y equals 1, y equals 0, and we have y equals minus 1. And if we were to travel around again, we'd get the same values over and over again, so this is going to repeat infinitely forever. Uh, what I notice also is that the highest value is 1, and the lowest value is minus 1. So let's think about how that would translate into a graph. Ooh, calm down there. Think about how that would translate into a graph. The highest value would be 1. The lowest value would be negative 1. So I'm going to draw out like a series of lines here that just say that this graph should be trapped in between those lines. It can't go outside. I noted that the graph started at 0. And a full cycle took about 2 pi radians. So we'll label the second part as 2 pi. Then if I look at this circle, the circle is divided into four equal quadrants. So I'm going to do the same to my x-axis. I've got 0 to 2 pi. Let me find the halfway mark and just label that pi. And let me find the two quarter way marks and label that pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Those are the four things you're always going to do. And when you have your axis like this, you're always going to divide it into four. If you want to graph two full periods, you could label out to 4 pi, go halfway in between, label that 3 pi, and then divide that into quarters as well. So you're always kind of dividing into quarters, just like if you had a piece of paper, you wanted to split it into quarters, what would you do? You'd fold it in half, then you'd fold it in half again. Same idea here. So now that you've done that, get your favorite rainbow pen, go back to your unit circle, look at all the values. Oh, excuse me. Go back to your unit circle, look at all the values from that unit circle, and uh, copy the y values in as you rotate around. So we started at y equals 0, then we're going up to y equals 1, y equals 0, y equals minus 1, and y equals 0. And then repeat the pattern and connect with a smooth curve. I do like to put arrows on both ends and kind of continue the pattern out in both ways to show that this really is a wave. It continues infinitely in both directions. So that's our parent function for sine of x. Let's go and look at our parent function for cosine of x. Those are the angles, and as I go around, I'm now going to label the x-coordinate. x is now 1, 0, minus 1, and 0. So again, the values are between minus 1 and 1. Make yourself some guidelines. These are optional, but the, I think they're really helpful. Just to tell you where the graph should go. Pick a spot somewhere in the middle, label that 2 pi. Label your 0. If you want to be fancy, go out to 4 pi. Cut each of those periods in half. That represents the half turns of the circle. And then cut each of those in half again. So you have uh, each period of this graph is divided into four equal parts. Now, look at the cosine values. We start at 1. 
Then we travel to zero. Then we travel to minus one. And then we travel back to zero. And then we finally finish back at one at the value we started at. So how would this look like as a curve? Because I know it looks like a V. Well, remember this comes from a circle. So it should increase and decrease smoothly throughout the whole period. I didn't quite get my spacing right here. And your cosine graph should look something like this. So that's uh, your parent graph for y equals cosine x in radians. So these are, uh, you know, if you have your scale in radians. And we'll put all those together and then freeze. Uh, so here's both of those graphs together, both parent graphs. Notice they look really similar. Uh, sine and cosine graphs come from the same circle. They're just opposite coordinates. So they're kind of uh, shifted apart from each other. Technically, we notice that just a shift of pi over two could turn a sine graph into a cosine graph if we were to move that sine graph just a little bit to the left. All right, so let's explore uh, a graph that has an amplitude and midline change. So the general format for these graphs is uh, y equals a sine or cosine bx plus c plus d. And what we have here is an a value and a d value. Notice how those are all outside the parentheses. So these are going to be output transformations. This 2 affects the amplitude or height of the wave. And you can also think about it as a vertical stretch. This one affects the midline, and you can also think about it as a vertical shift if you're thinking transformationally. Um, so we'll do the vertical stretch. You know, if you were doing this in order of transformations, you do the vertical stretch first, and then the vertical shift. Now uh, we have experience with sine and cosine graphs and the way they look, so I'm going to do both of them at the same time. Uh, I actually think it's, even though it's technically we're doing the amplitude stretch first, we should uh, stretch the midline, or draw the midline. So I'm going to draw that first. Here's our midline at 1. Now the amplitude is 2, so that means that I'm going to go up from the midline, plus 2, and down from the midline, minus two. And I'm going to kind of draw out some lines just as guides. Uh, so that will be at three and negative one. And I can see my scale is a little weird already, but that's okay. Now I've done both of the shifts, so I know already that my graph is going to look something like this, kind of just trapped in between. Now let's get rid of that graph and actually make a good graph. Label some point out here as two pi. Get an equal distance, label that as 4 pi. Um, now I'm going to actually make my marks on the midline. That's going to help me with my symmetry. So then in the middle of those, I need to make a mark. And in the middle of the middles, I need to make another mark. So these are going to kind of divide up my period uh, into four equal segments, and then I'm doing two periods. So that's why I have these divided out. Um, we'll label the first period. So this is pi, this is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. This is 3 pi, 4 pi. Uh, I guess this would be 5 pi over 2 and 6 pi over 2. I don't always find it necessary to label the, the second period that you label out, as long as you have one really good labeled period. So then get your favorite pen. Let's use um, this one. Plot out your landmark points. based on the circle, based on the parent graph, and sketch your smooth curve. So again, it's going to look a lot like the graph you made above. They're really similar, but the uh, scaling on your y-axis is the main difference. So you're, you know, if you can kind of develop a skill of drawing just one sine and cosine curve, and then scaling your x and y axis in different ways to get different graphs. Uh, now let's look at a graph that has a negative a value, because that's something you may not have seen before. Uh, the way to think about the negative a value is that it's a reflection over the x axis. 
and it's reflecting over x because it's taking the y values, it's outside of the function, and taking those y values and making them negative, which ends up with a net reflection over x. Um, so I'm going to label out my period. I'm going to go an amplitude of 3, and then plot out, uh, first I'm going to plot out y equals 3 cosine x, and then I'm going to take the negative of that. And so I'm just going to uh, shut up and plot that for a little bit. So that would be how you would graph something like a negative 3 cosine x. You obviously don't have to draw the original function. I'm doing it here to kind of show how the reflection looks. But if you're comfortable just immediately going to the negative 3 and starting the pattern right there, I think that's fine. So that's how you do something with a uh, negative period change. Those two transformations all together uh, are both output transformations, right? We, so we were changing the y values. I'm going to pause this video here and we'll go to the next video, the other side of this worksheet, and talk about input transformations.